This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Cars and trucks are killing more people in the United States. Pedestrians, to be exact. Pedestrian fatalities have increased every year since 2009. Last year, 6,500 pedestrians were killed and another 54,700 were injured. Big trucks and SUVs seem to be at the root cause of the problem. The IIHS found that SUVs, pickups, and vans are way more likely to hit a pedestrian while making a turn, especially left turns. The IIHS attributes this to the size of the A-pillar, which can be huge in full-size trucks and that creates blind spots. Here's our AutoLine Insight. The A-pillars are so big because safety regulations stipulate they have to support two and a half times the weight of a vehicle. That's to protect occupants in a rollover. Even so, 30% of all fatalities involve rollovers, and that rule has triggered the law of unintended consequences. While trying to save people in one area, it's killing them in another. Critics of electric cars, and there sure are a lot of them on social media, say, what about those batteries? Nobody knows how to recycle them. Well, we do know how to recycle them. And automakers are working with a number of startups to mine used batteries for raw materials. But before they even get to that stage, EV batteries can be used to create energy storage systems. That's why Jaguar Land Rover teamed up with a company called Pramic to make storage systems out of used iPACE batteries. You can get a system with a 125 kilowatt hour battery, which is enough to fully charge an iPACE or even power a home for a week. JLR used it at a Formula E race where it powered its team diagnostic equipment and supplied auxiliary power to its pit garage. The market for used EV batteries and storage systems could be huge. JLR says it could be worth $30 billion by 2030. Last week, we ranked the top car companies in the world by car sales. Then someone in the comments section said, we ought to show them ranked by revenue. That is, how much money they bring in on the top line. So here goes. VW and Toyota are in a class of their own. They're in the more than $200 billion a year club. Then about $100 billion behind them comes a middle group, surprisingly led by Stellantis, which is now the third largest car company in the world ranked by revenue. After that, you come to the group that hasn't quite cracked the $100 billion ceiling. We were surprised that Hyundai's on that list. It hasn't done that yet, and that's surprising considering it's number four in the world based on how many cars it sells. And looky here, Tesla will probably surpass Nissan this year, and it already sailed past Renault, even though Tesla sells less than half as many cars as they do. By the way, we love presenting you this kind of information because you're not going to find it anywhere else. Mobility is becoming electric connected and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. (laughs) 3D printing could turn out to be one of the greatest advances in manufacturing. And now Ford is taking it to a new level. It's operating 3D printers using a mobile robot from KUKA without any help from human beings. Nicknamed Javier by Ford's 3D printing team, it doesn't need a camera to see. Ford also developed an interface program to allow the robot to communicate with 3D printers because equipment from different suppliers typically do not come ready to interact with one another. Since no human supervision is needed, the robot can operate the 3D printer all night long in a lights out setting. It's currently being used for low-volume custom parts, like brake line brackets for the Mustang GT500. Not only can the robots help with 3D printing, Ford says they can be used in other areas of manufacturing to simplify equipment and add flexibility to the assembly line. 
While the rest of the industry is spending big on BEVs, Honda still believes in hybrids. It's investing just over a billion dollars to upgrade its plant in Ontario, Canada to build the 2023 CRV hybrid. Honda also builds the Civic in Canada and has the capacity to build about 400,000 vehicles annually in the Great White North. As you know, several car companies in China offer battery swapping, but now Geely is testing it for heavy-duty vehicles like cement mixers and semis. It had to modify the process because of the weight of the trucks. Instead of trying to lift the vehicle up to swap out the battery from underneath it, Geely's station uses a crane above the vehicle to hoist the battery out, which is located behind the cab. It takes about five minutes to swap a battery, and a single station can swap batteries for up to 50 trucks. The station is modular in design with a footprint of only 200 square feet, so it can be constructed quickly in just about in any location. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Lamborghini shrugged off the COVID pandemic and the chip shortage and just set an all-time record for sales, revenue, and profits. It sold 8,405 cars, which brought in nearly 2 billion euros in revenue, and it posted an operating profit of 393 million euros. The Urus SUV topped the sales chart, with over 5,000 of them going into customer hands. It sold nearly 2,600 Huracans and nearly 800 Aventadors. Lambo's biggest market is the U.S., which accounted for nearly 30% of sales, China accounted for about 11%, followed by Germany at 8%, and the United Kingdom at nearly 7%. Lambo says these are the last of its pure piston-powered cars. It's investing nearly 2 billion euros over the next five years to develop hybrid and electric models. The first of those is a hybrid version of the Aventador, which comes out next year, and sometime in the second half of this decade, it's going to come out with its first battery electric model. Speaking of electrics, Li Auto, the Chinese startup, unveiled this smart looking crossover this morning. Meet the L9, the second model in its lineup. It's priced between $71,000 and $79,000. It's a BEV with a 44.5 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it also comes with a 1.5 liter turbo range extender. The L9 delivers 200 kilometers in pure EV mode. That's about 124 miles. The range extender adds another 1,000 kilometers or another 624 miles for a total range of 745 miles. Inside, the instrument panel has two giant screens offset towards the front passenger, while the driver gets a head-up display for instrumentation. Note the bump above the middle of the windshield. That houses a LiDAR unit because the L9 comes ready for L4 driving, even though that's not legal yet in China, but could be approved soon. And hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours this afternoon as we dive into one of the most controversial topics involving car repair. Independent repair shops are running into problems trying to access the data they need to repair cars. Automakers are making it increasingly difficult to get that data. So why are they doing it and how are they doing it? We're going to get answers from Gabriel Hopkins from the Auto Care Association. She's coming on the show this afternoon and so is Richard Truitt from Automotive News. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Thank you for making AutoLine Daily a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.